Okay? Because now we need an expression of why. Well, what Lim is again a very smart guy, genius guy, okay? He introduced of all aspects, if you can think about it, trigonometry. As humble as that may sound. Trigonometry, okay. He needed a way to link x and y together, okay? The, the y is over here, the, the x is over here, that's the x axis. He needed a way to link the two. And this was what he did, the magical moment, or wow, this is the moment everybody's waiting for. You see, that is the point that we are concerned about, okay? That's the point that we are concerned about. And let's just draw a line from S. We are concerned with this point of origin, S and P, because Y is here, X is here, okay? So what he did is that, okay, let's draw a line from S to the point over here, okay? And likewise from P to the point over here. Okay, let's just say that P is the value of a certain X. Okay, and with this sort of shape, okay, it's quite difficult to see. Uh, maybe I draw another one, okay, which is something like that. Okay, it's quite difficult to see, I understand, but maybe draw another piece of paper. With this shape, you can notice that you've got a Y over here and we've got the X over here, okay? The X is over here like that, okay? And somehow, we need to link the two together or else that's the only way for us to progress further. So what he did was that, okay, let's label an angle here, phi. This big angle is phi, okay, and this angle over here is half phi. Okay, it takes me, it took me a moment to, to realize that, but I'll tell you now, it's 90 over here, 90 over here, tangent, and it's a yeah, straight line, right angle, and it's a tangent. See, this line's a tangent, so it's 90, 90, and then if you bisect this shape, where these two angles are the same, you would also bisect the angles, okay? They'll be similar, so you can just flip them around. So basically, this would bisect this angle here, and it will give us half theta. Half theta and, uh, sorry, half phi and phi over there. So now, things are getting a bit good because we can really find a relationship now. Okay, what is y? Now, y is over here, right? Now, remember, this is one. This whole length is one over here, okay? And this is x, okay? So what is y? Well, y would be tangent, sorry, y would be, yeah, tangent half theta, okay? Can we see that? Yes, we can see that. So what is x? Okay, would be x is equals to one minus, okay, cosine, sorry, one minus cosine theta, okay? I hope you can see that. Can we see that over there? Okay, this we are we're dealing with this triangle over here, okay? So this is, sorry, x is over here, okay? Cosine theta will give us the length here, okay? And this is one over here because that is the radius of the triangle. So cosine, cosine phi times one will give us the length over here, x is one minus that length, which is over here, yes, okay? Just take a look, careful look at the diagram and you will understand what I mean, okay? So now this is what we got. However, we are still not done, okay? Because we need to manipulate this identity or this trigonometry expression over there, okay? And this is how we go about doing it. I'll write it first, okay? And But you may be a bit shocked to see something like that, okay? But it shouldn't be too hard to derive. And for the purpose of this, I'm just going to derive it. If you don't want, you can just skip to the last section. Okay, but I think it's, it's very good. Okay, um, let's see whether I can still remember. Okay, I think I can. Okay, cosine d phi, right? Okay, you by using the addition formula, okay? So cosine phi, we can split it into phi divided by 2. Okay, but remember, if you use addition formula, it's phi plus phi. So it'll be cos, cos, sine, sine. Okay, so it'll be cos phi divided by 2, phi divided by 2, okay? And for cosine, it's minus, okay? So it's a square, sine, sine, sine. So it's sine squared, okay? Phi divided by two, okay? And then after this, is he just switched it around, or we'll switch it around, so we got sine squared phi divided by theta, okay? And we would minus cosine squared phi divided by two, sorry, phi divided by two. And here it's a nice tricky bit, okay? What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna open a bracket over here like that, okay? Look, minus cos cosine squared phi divided by 2, right? I'm going to plus, okay, a sine squared phi divided by 2, okay? So I'm just going to plus a, a sine squared phi divided by 2, but if you notice carefully, I'm actually subtracting that away. I'm subtracting this from the general expression. So to balance it out, I need to plus a sine squared phi divided by 2. Okay, I hope I explain again. Okay, this was the original expression that I have, right? I'm just bringing this thing over here. So it's sine squared minus cosine squared, right? So I'm gonna plus a sine squared, okay? But if when I plus a sine squared, I need to minus off a sine squared. So it's minus minus a sine squared over there like so, okay? And this is equals to cosine phi. 
Okay? However, what we know, well, what we can do is that this thing over here, okay, is 1, right? Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, okay? The common identity, 1 over here, and I will just plus 1 on this side of the expression so I can plus 1 over here to match up the 1. Sorry, sorry. I would, yeah, plus. Yep, 1, okay, and 1 plus, correct, 1, yeah, minus, okay? The cos, cos 5, when I bring it over the other side, becomes minus, my apologies, so I will plus 1 to both sides of the expression like so. Okay, it's a bit messy, but never mind. So 1, take away 1, okay, will be 0, sine squared plus sine squared will be 2 sine squared. Okay, so basically it's a 2 sine squared over here. There, nice and easy, okay? So I've just, just shown you this one over here. Okay, so quite good because now we are linking x and y with phi, uh, in the indicated angle on the diagram. Now the last part in the trigonometry aspect is writing this, okay? You see, what happened is that, you know, we got a, a tangent phi divided by 2, we got a sine squared phi divided by 2, so really let's find an expression, okay, where we can have the, the trigonometry identities as tangent and sine. Because in doing that, then we can quickly replace the x and y variables. So let's start with tangent squared phi divided by 2. As odd as we may think it is, okay, but that's what he did. And it's quite amazing because you got a sine squared phi divided by 2, just like we have over here, divided by a cosine squared phi divided by 2. Just re-expressing the, the tangent trigonometry function, okay? Now this thing becomes sine squared phi divided by 2 and times by a secant squared, okay? Secant squared phi divided by 2. But what do we know about secant squared? We know that secant squared can be re-expressed as, if I'm not wrong, be 1 plus tangent squared. Wow! Why do I say that? We got a tangent squared, we got a sine squared, we got a tangent squared. Let's substitute the x and y, okay? So, let's see what we got. Now, this will bring over here, so 2, so this will be x divided by 2, okay? This will be x divided by 2. The tangent squared here will be simply y squared. Okay, and then this one will be 1 plus y squared. Okay, 1 plus y squared, and then I will just rearrange that. 